Blazinger. Yes. So he is joining us here in the herd. He's on the truth couch. This All is right. exciting. So we're going to announce the groupings. Now, let's start with this, Paul. Bring that mic right up to you. Okay. How important is it? Not, like, like, does it matter who you play with on Thursday, Friday? I, I think the first thing that I used to look for and I think the players look for is am I early, late, and then definitely who you're playing with because it can matter. I mean, I guarantee it mattered to Nicholas if he was paired with Arnold. And it mattered to everybody if they were paired with Tiger. Like Jordan Spieth is a slow player. Same with pace of play, guys. If you're with a slow guy, then it, it matters to you. You kind of groan. If you're with a guy that's, that complains all the time and fussing all the time, you know, you, you already know you're going to be on the other side of the fairway. And then there's guys, you know, I guarantee you, Justin Leonard will tell you it helped him to win the British Open that he was paired with Fred Couples How come? on Sunday because of the relationship that they have. He just made him more comfortable. Um, Did you play with anybody that made you really comfortable? A lot of guys made me Who really made you uncomfortable? A few guys made me uncomfortable. Um, you know, uh, I didn't like playing with Freddie because he was so relaxed and I was so much more intense that I started walking around like I didn't care. And the next thing I know, <laughs> Freddie's 10 shots ahead of me or something. <laughs> That's funny. But, you know, it's I love golf so much. And I, I, these whole the pairings matter, though, and it, it gets amped up towards Sunday. You know, if you get paired with Tiger on Sunday and you're in the last group, I used to think, like, if I was in the last group on Sunday – I wanted to be the last guy on the tee. And so my philosophy was to kind of piddle around and watch the other guys I was playing with on Sunday. And uh, it happened to me at Memorial one time. I was paired with Tiger on Sunday, and I was one shot ahead, and I was waiting for Tiger to go down to the tee. And we're about four or five minutes before we tee off. It's time to go down to the tee, and I'm ready to go. And I'm looking around, Tiger's still hitting putts. So I piddled for another couple minutes, and I looked up, and he was gone. I was like, oh, perfect. So I walked down to the tee, and the green sits above us, and we've got to walk down to the tee, and the tent's in between that on that grade, and you get your scorecard and your pencil, and you get sure. your pin sheet and all that stuff. And I got down to the tee, and Tiger wasn't there. See, I wanted the, I wanted the guys to hear him clapping for me. That's what I was thinking. So there's a lot of mental stuff it's on this. It's just like, I don't know, maybe I'm psycho, but I think Tiger thought that way. And so I looked around, I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's not here. And then I looked up. And he's up there on that hill, and here he comes wearing black pants and a shirt the color of blood. And now they're clapping for him. And I thought, you know what? This guy is so freaking clever. He outfoxed me a little bit. And I think he did it on purpose. Tiger showed up in character when he came to these tournaments. There's no doubt about it. I don't know what he was listening to in the car, but when those cleats hit the ground, <laughs> he was playing a part. Well, it's intimidation. This this sport like baseball, you get downtime. There's a lot of time to think. We've seen great players devolve and evolve, and, and you're stating it. So here we go. Let's talk about a, a couple of them, first okay. of all. I am always, and, and for all of you listening right now, we're, we're going to talk most of the major groupings, but underneath on the ticker, we'll have all of them. So let's start out. Uh, let's talk Bubba Watson. Now, Bubba Watson's a player that not everybody loves. Bubba can be a little rigid. He's a little outspoken. Where's Bubba at? Well, Bubba, what do you want to know? Like, yeah, I want you to tell our audience where he's in that guy. I have it right here. Do you have it? I, I don't have it in front of me. But okay, 7.51 in the morning. Yeah, I think Bubba's liking to get out early. He likes Oakmont, which is important for Bubba Watson. And it's not necessarily a bomber's paradise, but somebody like Bubba can throw caution to the wind and just say, I'm going to still utilize my strength, which is bombs off the tee. But usually the U.S. Open neutralizes that advantage. So strategically, I can't wait to see how Bubba does. The greens are the, they're the most difficult greens in the world to putt on, whether he can handle the greens or not. You know, we'll see. So he is the one, two, three, four, five. So he is the seventh group out at 751 on Thursday with Matt Kuchar and Patrick Reed. So Rory McElroy is 30 minutes later playing with uh, Willett, the English kid, Danny uh, Willett, uh, Willett and, the and Ricky Fowler. They tee off at uh, 824. What do you think of that grouping? It's a really interesting dynamic because Ricky Fowler and Rory McElroy are brand building. You know, they go to Twitter and they build their brand on Twitter. Danny Willett's more that blue collar guy, you know, that uh, Cockney guy from from classic British from golfer, England that's sitting in the pub drinking beers with his buddies. And uh, but he won the Masters, and I think that's an interesting group. They're all completely different personalities. I think they all get along really well and all have an opportunity to win. You talk about Oakmont, um, like certain courses. Like if I say Masters to you, I'm talking style of golf that wins. If I say Masters, you think. Bomber's Paradise. Okay, if I say if I say Oakmont, what do you think? 
Uh, well, Oakmont, I think it's more control, and you got to be great on the greens or you're not going to be anywhere. So 100 yards in, the U.S. Open will be won on really great putting. You know, when I got this gig with Fox, I wrote down immediately, keys to winning a U.S. Open, dot, dot, dot. And as I look, I'm – and write down things over the last six months, five months, or whatever, you know, the realization hits me it's the same keys to winning anywhere, any given week. You've got to drive it decent, you've got to wedge it well, and you've got to putt it. thing with the U.S. Open, though, everything's magnified times 10. All the pressure's amped up. Instead of talking to 30 people at a regular tour event in the press room, you're talking to three or 400 people in the press room. And then, of course, some players are in this game to build a legacy and to try to make history. We only choke for two things. Colin, cash and prestige. If you can't win the most prestigious event, you're choking for the cash. If you got a putt to finish third by yourself or tied for third with 10 people or five people, it's a money putt and you're choking for the cash. But but these guys are going to be choking for the prestige. And come Sunday. If, as a pro golfer, U.S. Open Masters, you could win one. Like I, I look at it and I think I'd want to win the U.S. Open. Now, that's nothing against CBS and the Masters, and I, I'm not yeah. a, I'm not a diehard golfer, but I'm winning the United States Championship. That to me would be the like. How do you guys view it? I think they just did a poll recently, and and the Masters was uh, picked as the the event the players wanted to win the most. The part players it, wanted. Yeah, part of it I think is the way it's been presented over the years, the familiarity. Nobody goes into Augusta naive. Everybody knows it starts on the back nine on Sunday. Everybody knows what's happened on 10 in the history of that event, 11, 12, amen corner. Jordan Spieth added to that legacy of the 12th hole okay. this year by dunking it in the water and US, losing the tournament. U.S. There. Open has eaten up a few golfers. Like well, guys, guys complain about the U.S. Open at the time they're rough, right? Absolutely. Now, so then you've got another mindset that says, I want to win the U.S. Open. But the U.S. Open's a bear. I mean, it, it will, it's, it's claustrophobic. It's, it's a, it's a nerve nightmare for the players. I mean, imagine if you sometimes you feel like you're playing with your last ball at the U.S. Open. I came into some U.S. Opens where I was like pre-tournament favorite, maybe not the favorite, but like expected to do well. And I can remember standing on that first tee, scared to death, thinking, "How am I going to get my ball in that fairway?" Because if you don't, you're making bogey. And and Oakmont's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. I'll, I'll be a Phil Mickelson fan until he leaves. I just, I, there's so many layers of liking Phil Mickelson. So he's going to be in the 209 afternoon group. That's pretty late with Justin Rose and Heinrich uh, Stenson. Henrik Stenson. Henrik Stenson. So what does that mean for Phil? You know, Mickelson is one of those guys with that long language swing. He's got six seconds at the U.S. Open. I think he can contend in U.S. Opens until he's well into his 50s. He's, he's got to do it, though, and he wants it more than anything. Maybe he wants it too much. I don't think he likes Oakmont. He said the other day it's the hardest course in the world. and uh, Phil said that. He did, and, he, and I think it's, it's either, you know, I, I, I don't know how he's going to approach it, how Mickelson's going to approach it, but he's got the ability to pull it off at Oakmont. Paul, what, what, Paul Isinger joining us. What, when he says toughest, he's one of the great shot makers right. ever. What, 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 what scores are you looking at? Like, like, what, like what's going to win this tournament? It feels like over par is going to win the event. The bunkers over have... Over par? It took five over to win there last time. Isn't that incredible? It is incredible. And a lot of people ask the question, like, do you have to trick it up to get the greatest players on earth to shoot over par? And at Oakmont, you really don't. It, they could host a U.S. Open there, um, you know, two years ago. If you just said, we need to do it because our course got washed out, we got to play at Oakmont. Is it, it the it topography, it. Paul? Yes. So it, it, it's a rough physical tournament. Well, it's, it's not flat. There are some hills. The bunkers are extremely deep at Oakmont, and I would say 70 or 80% of the shots that go in the fairway bunkers off the tee are not going to get on the green in regulation. I think most of the recovery shots are going to come from around the greens. But the greens themselves are so severe and so fast, Colin, they're the fastest greens in the world. It's undeniable um, that you can't always control where your ball is going to stop. And if you don't hit the shot with full integrity, then you got no chance. You can be you can be completely humiliated around the greens here. Easily. Your bunker shots have to be crisp. Your pitch shots have to be right. You know, the sweet spot's as big as the end of your finger. I don't care how big the club is or how forgiving the club is. You may not feel... Uh, as much of a clank if you miss hit. But the sweet spot is as big as the end of our finger. And the guys that are going to be in contention in Oakmont will have hit that sweet spot a lot. Uh, Jordan Spieth is uh, a, he, Jordan Spieth is playing with Zach Johnson 
and a young player I don't know from Clovis, California, which is near Fresno at 8.35 in the morning. Jordan Spieth. Um, Bryson DeChambeau he's paired with. Who's that was the really good. Amateur champion. And uh, he's a quite the character. He's turned pro now, and he's got Zach Johnson, who won the British Open. Um, so, I, you know, that, that's the way the USGA always does that. But uh, Bryson DeChambeau is really a big part of the future of the game of golf, I feel. I think he's a future number one player in the you, world. Wow. Bryson DeChambeau. Um, I have a lot, I, you know, I think he has a lot of confidence in himself, but I have a lot of confidence in him as well. And uh, he's unique. He's more of a scientist, kind of an engineer in the way he thinks and approaches the game. He has a unique set of clubs, unique to anything we've ever seen in well, the well, game What do you of mean golf. by that? They're, 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 so they're, Jordan Spieth is golfing with the next Jordan Spieth? Probably, yeah, I think that's the case. And we'll see. I mean, I may be over, uh, you know, uh, overly excited about the Bryson DeChambeau potential, but uh, I don't think so. All his clubs are the same length with his irons. Everyone else's clubs vary by a half an inch as we go down through the bag. And uh, he's, he's a part of that. You know, you have two kinds of players, really. You have the artist and the engineer. If you can converge the two, then you really got well, something. What were you? I was more the artist. When well, you I started late, though. I did, but when I became more the engineer, when I tried to become like more technically sound and more conscious of my actual motion, um, then my game started to deteriorate. And I'll tell you what, the, a lot of times there's no joy in the engineer style of play. There's real joy in the artist. Like, hey, watch well, this. Well, who wants to hang out with engineers? I want to hang out with artists. Thank you. Me they too. drink better wine. They're more fun after the tournament. Yeah, but they cut their ears off, too. <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, Paul Lazinger, it's Thursday through Sunday, the U.S. Open Championship at Oakmont, what Phil Mickelson calls the toughest golf course in the world. Spieth, McElroy, and Day are the favorites. So where Jason Day is at the 220, now this is interesting. He gets a late grouping at 220. Green's different by 220? Yeah, they are, but you got to realize they're, if they go late the first day, they're going early the second day. And a lot of players want to go late early. If you go early late, then... The, you know, by Friday afternoon is when the greens can really get roughed up because you have 156 players and they've all walked on the greens for two straight days. So afternoon Friday to me is generally more difficult. I always preferred late early in these big events, late because you could start out your day knowing what the scoreboard looks like and then get the advantage of early conditions the next day. That's what I hoped for. I didn't really keep track of it, but some people do keep track of the fact that Oh, I'm all the wrong end of the tee time all the time. Yeah. Um, but why, uh, why, why, why screw with your head? Just, guys just do it. Okay, so Thursday afternoon, I, a, a guy I like, Dustin Johnson. He's gone off the rails. Not everybody likes him. He, he's, he, can be, he can be his own worst enemy. He's playing at 136. Now, this is interesting. He's playing with Sergio, who's another slow player. Now, I, I would think, this is my interpretation, uh, Paul Azinger joining us. If I'm a fast player, Sergio would drive me crazy. Jordan Spieth would drive me crazy. So Sergio's a slow player. How will Dustin play with him? I I don't I mean, I think it's not gonna bother him either way. If if I, if I was paired with a slow player, I played slow to start with him. I started out slow. I wanted the officials right there. I wanted them to time us right out of the gate. And then once the slow guy gets on the clock, he picks up the pace. And then you can play at a normal pace until the clock guy leaves then the guys slow down automatically. They know how to beat the system, the slow players do. But it's not going to affect Dustin Johnson. Um, you know, I, I think he's do, a guy. Do players root for him? Probably. I think he's pretty well liked in the you locker room. You do think room. so? I think so. He, I think so. I, I mean, I haven't been in the locker room for four or five years with those guys, but I believe Dustin Johnson's a fairly popular guy, and everybody knows he's a great athlete, great player. He, he doesn't miss the sweet spot very often. He hits it right on the button. Um, he's like Watson or like Freddie Couples. They didn't always know for sure where it was going, but, you, you know, they knew they were going to hit it solid. And Dustin has an opportunity. Imagine if he would have won last week the, the different lines of questions for Dustin Johnson going into this week. But he hasn't won since he lost the U.S. Open. Jordan Spieth, since he lost the Masters, already won a tournament. That's right. And so now the whole line of questions, it's like he's over it already. It's further behind him. Look how great. Think about that. I've said this before on this show, full disclosure, that I think the hardest professional sport to be a professional athlete in is golf because you don't get Scotty Pippen if you have a bad night. You don't right. get Clay Thompson. You're paying your own way. You're having troubles at home. It defects you. Well, if you had bad weather, look at how good this tournament no is. There's no timeouts either. No time. There's no role players. It's no. on you. Bubba Watson, this is how deep this tournament is, is only 30 to 1. Yeah. Bubba Watson? Yeah, I mean, you... there was two years ago, I could have made an argument he was the best golfer in the world. Would I have been crazy? 
No, not at all. Bubba can get red hot, and he's not scared. Two Masters for Bubba Watson, two-time Masters champion, is a big deal. That's Hall of Fame. It's like automatic Hall of Fame. All right, I gotta, t I gotta get out of here. Paul Azinger, Fox Golf Analyst. It is Thursday to Sunday, FS1 and Fox, the U.S. Open Championship at Oakmont. You were great.